Namaste, Namaskar, Vanakam to all the Sri Guru audience. I always mention about uh, my joy of interacting with them. I thank Sri Iyer for this opportunity. Today we will uh, take up a topic called uh, Judiciary of India. To whom it is accountable? Now some of my friends have told it's a very sensitive topic. You know, uh, I am sure uh, people in judiciary are uh, having enough amount of uh, sense of humor as well as uh, ability to withstand uh, some of these uh, issues. Okay, first and foremost, let's start with uh, a light-hearted comment and also with light-hearted comment. My good friend Ram Jetmalani, an anecdotal uh, thing used to be told. I didn't have occasion to actually check whether it is factual or not with him. The thing is, uh, it appears once he was uh, in the court, some of the uh, judges, uh, you know, in a very light-hearted banter before the case started, asked him, what do you think about our, uh, uh, our uh, about us as well as our judgments and other things. He seems to have uh, retorted allegedly, if I tell a lie, it will be perjury. Perjury on my part. If I tell the truth, it will be contempt of court. So, either way, I am not able to uh, respond to your, uh, what one can call, uh, request to comment about you. Anyhow, that is a sort of a thing. Now, the judiciary has always been a, I have the storm, if you ask me, from a long period, 70s, 80s, uh, and you know, during Indira Gandhi period, and after that also for some time, uh, there was a issue of this uh, committed judiciary, you know, judiciary which is committed to whatever it is, committed to some principles or committed to some uh, ideas of uh, socialistic pattern of society or something. We are Krishna here, you know, well-known communist uh, uh, Marxist sympathizer. He was uh, became a Supreme Court judge. Chandru, another CPM sympathizer and uh, earlier member also, I think. He became a Madras High Court judge. Like that, uh, you know, several cases were there. But uh, they were all applauded in those days. Because they thought that uh, having these as uh, judges is a very useful thing. There were some criticism by the others that uh, but uh, anyhow, committed judiciary was considered as something which is uh, palatable first in those days. Then uh, came the famous uh, issue of this uh, Keshavananda case, Keshavanand Bharati case. We will come back to that, which uh, created this whole idea of the uh, basic structure of the uh, constitution. We will uh, come to that actually. Before that, Somewhere in the beginning of the century, uh, judiciary also began to dabble in uh, what I call sacred issues. You know, the opposite of secular is sacred, not communal. This uh, opposite of sec uh, secular is communal was introduced by the Communist Party. That is not the secular opposite is sacred. Let's be very clear about it. And uh, as far as the Hindu culture, custom and beliefs, uh, all are sacred for us. A stone is sacred, an animal is sacred, a, a river is sacred, a tree is sacred, everything is sacred. And in other Abrahamic beliefs and other things, uh, all are not sacred. In uh, the uh, church belief, it is uh, you know, the bread and the wine and are supposed to be the sacred. And in the other Islamic, uh, practically nothing is sacred. All are secular only. Only the... Uh, the, the name of the God is uh, sacred and his uh, writing is uh, sacred. He is not even seen in the physical, you know, in photograph or in any, any moving object is not expected to be photographed. So, there is no idea of, he uh, is so sacred that, you know, the God is uh, kept away from all these uh, mundane uh, issues and other things. Anyhow, what has happened is, somewhere, you know, they began to get into, I think if I remember correctly, it uh, you know it became a major issue in uh, sunny 
Shingrapura in that Maharashtra actually about pouring oil on the sunny thing. You know, the Bombay High Court finally intervened and told women can also do that task. And uh, so it was uh, one that Tripti Desai was uh, for a short period very popular as a aggressive woman liberator. She was the one who was leading it. Then a series of things. Somebody wrote an inland letter to Supreme Court about uh, this uh, Thiruvananthapuram, Padmanabha Swami temple, assets are all misused and uh, that could have been some uh, logic or reason for it. Anyhow, immediately the Supreme Court uh, took cognizance of it and uh, asked some Amir Kuris and then uh, you know, also wanted all the lockers to be opened and there is an extraordinary interference into the uh, for instance, can you imagine anybody writing in Italy uh, or Vatican a letter like this about uh, or any other church, not only the uh, Roman church and uh, court ordering for the opening up of all the walls. Anyhow, of the three walls, two were opened and uh, huge amount, billions of dollars worth of gold, diamond, silver and the knives and various things were found. It's a very, if you ask me honestly as a professor of finance, it's a foolish move actually for the simple reason, one, there are global thieves looking at all these issues. In Europe, for instance, with all the uh, so-called security cameras and this and that and other thing, they somehow enter inside and steal the valuable paintings and take it away. We read it in the paper. So they would be really wetting their tongues, you know, on looking at this. Uh, is not a very... Second is, you know, somebody clamor is every temple uh, gold should be uh, opened up, every mass gold or church gold. So all futile thing because if you open up all these things, the gold, global gold prices will uh, sharply fall. Indian women will become suddenly half rich of what they are today. Anyhow, this whole thing, I am telling as a finance professor, I am not talking from the legal point of view. This is the most uh, uh, stupidest uh, act. Anyhow, and uh, finally, I think the third chamber has not been opened and the whole issue is now kept in abeyance. Then there is some group of NGO, some letter about uh, this uh, uh, you know, uh, woman in the menstruating age or not allowed into Sabarimala and again Supreme Court jumped into that. I don't understand at all. There has not been any huge procession or uh, demand from large number of devotees, women of that temple, to enter. And uh, since a group of four or five girls who have never had occasion to go to Sabarimala and incidentally the judges who heard the case also have not gone to that. Just, you know, this is a sort of a uh, thing and, uh, you know, it, sometimes it looks as if uh, either uh, at the Bombay local train they talk about time pass or it is to get some TRP. Anyhow, that judgment also got uh, into the cold storage as of now because there was a huge amount of protest by women that we are not interested in entering. Why are you trying to do this? It's a purely a political game followed. Interestingly, if another interesting fact is when the court get into the um, you know issues of other religions, their reactions are totally uh, different and they develop cold feet. Let's see the 2007 judgment about this uh, issue of that uh, you know the Stein's murder case and the facts are as follows. While upholding the life sentence on Dara Singh, main accused in the Stein's murder case, Justice Satasivam and B.S. Chauhan observed murder had taken place in an atmosphere that had been poisoned by the conversion activism of foreign missionaries in that part of Orissa. In the open court, they told on a Friday, it's undisputed, there is no justification for interfering in someone's belief by way of use of force, provocation, conversion, incitement, Upon a fraud premise, one religion is better than the other. This was on record, told in the open court. The two Supreme Court judges proved even than the church, John Dayal and other, 
This was pronounced on 25th January, a Friday. 25th January, Tuesday, they reopened the matter in the open court, announced deletions of their observation and some changes. And uh, what exactly made them do this is uh, unclear. But obviously, there would have been a global and domestic pressure to reconsider their observation. And uh, they only mildly uh, made a uh, observation in the new judgment that uh, there is no justification for interfering in uh, other people's uh, belief, uh, etc. That's all. And uh, this was later modified. More than 12 years have been, etc. Awarded, uh, uh, elapsed since the act was committed. We are of the opinion awarded by the High Court need not be announced. Factual position discussed in the earlier case. They also made the observation that, uh, you know, the all that uh, you know, strong sentences were removed. It was replaced by no justification for interfering in someone's religious belief by any means. That's all. What I, why I want to stress the point is when it comes to other type of religions, they are very, very cautious. But when it comes to the Hindu faith, they feel that uh, it can be uh, taken for a ride because of the power of the NGOs who are uh, sitting at Delhi and filing, like in that famous uh, Diwali cracker case. Some NGO filed it and uh, they banned the cracker. And much later now it is being realized that Diwali is not the cause for uh, pollution. But they don't have the, uh, what one can call, uh, humility to accept it, revise, rescind their judgment. And other is, the most absurd thing is, height of Dahi and D in uh, Pare, you know, during Krishna Jayanti, they have this, uh, uh, you know, the pyramid type of thing. Uh, the boys climb and then uh, uh, hit the Dahi, you know, the curd pot. And then some gift is there and they get take it. What should be the height of that? This uh, Supreme Court spent a lot of time on this. I cannot believe this even, actually. Even girls do that. Because this is a local Tana's work, not that of the Supreme Court. Finally, they came to something like 20 feet. And my only issue is, they don't have any instrumentality to implement any of these things. Do they have an instrumentality to implement that uh, the Shani temple uh, oil can be poured by women also? Have they checked after their uh, judgment what has happened? A simple thing what has happened is a large number of people have not gone to the temple. And even today, even whoever is going is not uh, you know, wanting to do what has been so-called quote-unquote permitted by the judiciary. This whole thing is uh, like you know, some group of women told that uh, we, would, we should be also uh, wearing uh, this uh, what you may loosely call kurt kurta and other thing and uh, allowed to not just sari into the uh, Guruvayur temple. Uh, that became a big issue and, uh, and uh, that was uh, permitted. But uh, in practice, nobody goes with those things. They all go with uh, uh, sari and dhoti also for men. Actually, there are some dhotis which are uh, uh, on rental available and uh, some men put the dhoti over the pant. Or... Anyhow, and uh, there is absolutely no reason for Supreme Court to enter into any of the sacred issues. Unless they think that they are the reformist, the combination of Raja Ram Mohan Rai and Narayan Guru of Kerala, and others, which is a very, very stupid thing to think. It's extremely difficult to be a reformist by a court in the Indian situation, because the society has to change, the society has to accept you as a reformist, you want to do reform. For instance, society accepted Gandhi, society accepted Rajaji in terms of uh, uh, reforms in the sphere of uh, uh, this uh, listed uh, uh, communities, uh, SEST and other. Society, unfortunately, sorry to tell, didn't accept uh, either Ambedkar or Evier, because they were not considered as uh, deeply rooted in our culture, tradition and uh, uh, civilizational ethos to change some. See, if you want to change any of the thing of the Hindu society, you have to be extremely pious, 
recognized as somebody who is uh, rooted in the issues like Swami Vivekananda. He could uh, criticize, he could change. Gandhiji could do it, Rajaji could uh, uh, make a temple entry possible, but not other people. This is something which I think uh, the court should be very clear that uh, it is not on the social reform or societal reform agenda. Its agenda is very simple. Just see whether the laws passed by the parliament are in congruence with the constitution. That's all, period. There are other burning issues other than the Dehi and the and other thing is the Bombay bar girls, you know, how much hip they can show her. I don't understand, you know, I don't even want to discuss the type of thing they are uh, taking up. And uh, spending time, wasting time, uh, roughly 50,000 plus uh, cases are pending in the Supreme Court. So they are not underlined, not NOT several times, underline it uh, as a social reform uh, agents. Their role is not that actually. If unless they had understood it to be like that, they are very, very wrong actually. Their job is simply interpret the uh, laws passed by the uh, lawmakers and see whether it is in congruence or. And in the process, after the, you know, this uh, case by the famous uh, uh, Keshwanandabar, they have begun to, you know, in a sense, uh, what one can call, uh, arrogate to themselves what is called the basic structure of the constitution. You see the basic structure goes on increasing. Everything is there in the basic structure today. Uh, it should be our uh, democratic republic and our should be having federal system, our should be secular. You name one, it is in the basic structure. Actually, the whole constitution is a basic structure. Where is a separate basic structure required another? The entire constitution, that is the whole job of the court to see whether the lawmakers are making laws which are in congruence with that. And somehow they have got this uh, doctrine of basic It's nowhere else in the world this type of an idea is there. That within a constitution, uh, and uh, you see the list of items which have been in the Bombay judgment, uh, further it has been... Uh, uh, what one can call uh, improved. Every judgment, uh, Indra Sahani judgment, it was improved. Every judgment, uh, one or two things are added. This is something which is, uh, uh, you know, to me it looks very odd actually. The second associated with the basic structure, they uh, created this later, the collegium system. That means, uh, you know, they have the Supreme Court judge and other uh, judges will sit together and decide who should become the uh, other uh, Supreme Court judges and High Court judges and transfer and other. This is a Swambu. They don't want any other entity to be part of the collegium system. This is something un, you know, unimaginable. Not seen according to me anywhere in the world. In other words, we will tell who should be the judges and uh, it's no more in terms of uh, recommendation also. It has become more or less a order and uh, government must obey this. Recently, I read in paper that one of the judges told 10 days notice government should uh, come forward and accept other, our suggestion. Otherwise, what is this? Can anyone give a notice to the court telling within 30 days you finish this case? Would they accept? There are cases and cases going on for donkey's years. Fortunately, we believe in rebirth. In the sense, uh, some of these cases could be next uh, birth. The accused can be the lawyer. Lawyer can be the judge. The judge can become the accused. Like that, it goes on. So that uh, we can feel comfortable yeah. based upon our belief in the rebirth. There are cases pending which is more than the life of the judges. Those are the issues which... Uh, other is very serious issue is in terms of the... Uh, reservation. Many states have crossed the boundary of 50%. Some states like Tamil Nadu is 69% and they have kept it under schedule so that it cannot be even questioned in the court. And that case is pending for some 25 years. 69% in Tamil Nadu is reserved for uh, the 91% of the people. 
is supreme court uh, you know alive to this and want to deal with this issue at all any time already something like uh, uh, 30 years have passed in this so there are so many critical issues uh, uh, which are uh, being faced in the country and why supreme court wants to spend time on all this thing any headlines immediately they take it up the bbc somebody files a case and then adani somebody i think they go by the television headlines or what i sometime wonder whether uh, trp is also one of the underlying principles in the functioning of the court and that uh, gentleman what is his name ml sharma he is the astana one i i have a way Vague suspicion. He has a room inside the Supreme Court. He stays there, I think. Tuck, tuck. He files cases and they are taken up. Sometimes it is also could be, you know, allegations are there. It is sponsored cases. That means some case is filed so that it will be rejected. After that, uh, nobody else can file another case against that. I, you know, I am, I am, maybe I am a dumb person. I am not able to understand the nuances of all these. Uh, uh, legality is another collegium system also is accused of having its own uh, nepotism for instance there is an example given i hope it's not a uh, correct one why we chandrachud he recommended bn kripal Singh. that was in uh, 79 and uh, in 2000 kripal uh, recommended dy chandrachud his son why we uh, chandrachud son now, Chandrasud, uh, D.Y. Chandrasud in 22, he is recommending S.B. Kripal, who is the son of the original. You know, uh, this whole thing is, uh, you know, I shouldn't use such a word. It looks like, uh, you know, some of the uh, family-based regional parties uh, operation and other thing. A, it's opaque. It's not very clear what all the parameters and dimension. B, it is... Uh, you know, they talk about diversity. Suddenly, one of the, somebody who believes in the same sex uh, principle should be. Diversity cannot be a criteria for becoming a member in the Supreme Court. Should be efficiency, knowledge of law. Similarly, women judges. This is another peculiar thing. Actually, somebody should go back and read history. Gandhiji did the Pune uh, fasting against the principle that only Dalits can, uh, Arijans can represent Arijans. In those days, they were called Arijans. He's, he told no. And uh, finally, he and Ambedkar came into an agreement wherein the Arijans can uh, be allotted constituencies where the general uh, non-Arijans can also be voting. It's not exclusively... The whole principle that uh, women alone can represent women interest, uh, the the SCs alone can represent SC interest, Muslims alone can, this is anathema to the functioning of our republic. Why uh, any upper caste man can sit and uh, give a judgment against uh, or for in the case of uh, Dalit? Any a non-woman member of the uh, judiciary can also give judgment not necessarily against women. This whole idea is obnoxious, if you ask me, that only that group can represent uh, uh, the interest of that group. This is something which has uh, uh, come in like a poisonous seed and uh, uh, accepted like uh, everybody else, actually. Anyhow, so this is, uh, Collegium is very opaque. This level of opaqueness is uh, not... Uh, and they say that their uh, recommendation or uh, in a sense it has become mandatory. The other one, NGAC Act 2014 was rejected by whom? The same people, the Swayambhu people. It's a good act. It wanted some of the law minister and other representative, very eminent people only inside the collegium. So the argument given by the vice president recently as well as the law minister is not without substance the pendulum swings from one end to the another end one end we have got this vr krishnayar becoming the supreme court judge noted known marxist uh, thinker on the other end now we have got the other extreme that uh, they want uh, diversity and uh, uh, people who advocate uh, 
homosexuality and other thing to be uh, you know the pendulum in our indian context is uh, significantly swinging we have to sit somewhere in between the collegium has to accept some representative from the uh, elected representative that is the mps or uh, minister concerned or to be part of that in order to bring some semblance of uh, orderliness and uh, unbiased it's a perception which is much much more critical perception of ordinary people about the judiciary unfortunately is not palatable today people don't want to go to police station because people don't think uh, visiting police station is a desirable thing i am being very blunt about it most of the people will try to avoid if you hit a car another car and the minor thing both of them will decide no 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 point in going to the thana we will settle it out of thana because many a places in thanas uh, the police people want to give their own uh, uh, what one can call uh, pronounce judicial pronouncement type they want to settle the case they are uh, investigating agencies that uh, they have to take it to the next levels any of that is gone same way in court people don't want to go to court lower level courts are totally not uh, having any amount of uh, credibility there is a you know it's a open secret i am not uh, revealing anything i hope the judiciary will uh, listen to this there is a court uh, arbitrage lawyers openly tell sir wait for this uh, judge to go the other judge will come in the summer or something during that period we will take up this case because this judge is not going you know this is uh, and lower courts are also periodically some report come about corruption periodically some report one report recently i read very highly humorous fellow was not even a uh, law graduate but he has become a judge and he was uh, you know lower level judge for quite some time and uh, many of the places you find unfortunately the law students are totally unlawful people in the country and they are going to become future uh, what one can call uh, lawyers and judges so the lower judiciary is uh, having huge amount of problem in terms of uh, number of case loads in terms and uh, many a time many of the lower judiciary people it's uh, you know often told uh, they do not read the judgments of the high court and uh, supreme court so we get contradictory judgment even high courts couple of high courts give uh, judgments which are in contravention to what has been decided by the supreme court they say they don't have time to read and uh, prepare and hopefully this uh, new level artificial intelligent chat bot and other thing will uh, remove many of these uh, problems in terms of the legal advisors and in terms of the preparation of the cases lawyers and tremendous amount of changes are expected to come but uh, the judiciary should realize that uh, its credibility is at stake let's be very very honest and clear about it and uh, the more the credibility is at stake more the perception by the public is that uh, they are not uh, delivering the more it is uh, difficult for them to overcome the crisis they are in a very deep crisis they should realize it because sc itself is having 55000 or some number more than that cases pending and at um, uh, high court level and lower level unbelievable number of cases pending there are my own personal knowledge there are cases which are 10 years or 12 years pending and other thing unbelievable so both the basic structure according to me is a highly you know humorous because the constitution itself is a basic structure why create another sub structure of the basic structure and other thing second is uh, the issue pertaining to the collegium i think uh, they should have a relook at this whole thing the collegium system and they should uh, come to some uh, important uh, conclusions of including the uh, the elected represent elected representatives are not uh, you know anathema or anything some of them maybe uh, should not have been elected at all but i am sure 
they are not going to become a member of the collegium or anything so there is a via media i would say instead of the pendulum swinging from extremely committed judiciary to judiciary which is not committed to anything so it cannot be of this nature somewhere in between it has to uh, settle down that is very very important of course one thing i forgot to tell that the famous keshavananda bharti case of the you know the kerala uh, the mat which uh, was rejected the decision of the kerala uh, uh, government by the court which had its origin in the uh, basic structure that case was <laughs> conducted by palkiwala who is no more and uh, soli sorab ji and fali nariman were his assistant that time so they were uh, so there is a very very interesting type of a thing at that point of time it was required so changing times also are very very important at a point of time a and ray was considered as a acceptable judge for a committed judiciary achar kanna who was one of the dissenters in the emergency period he was so overlooked which is a very unfortunate thing anyhow so times are so important there is nothing is frozen even constitution which is sacrosanct is uh, amended many a time in order to go by most important is judiciary is uh, should not consider itself to be reforming the society that's not its uh, task at all actually in a very light hearted way india is the only country where the commerce students and chartered accountant and other study what is called banking law and practice taxation law and practice contract law and practice in all over the world the subject is banking law taxation law india alone that practice as a, a tail comes i asked somebody very knowledgeable senior person in the judicial system he says their banking law is the uh they actually practice is something which is uh, you know which is uh, to make you understand how to deal with <laughs> this uh, government and regulators and other thing so the role of uh, reforming the society kindly leave it to leaders of the society religious leaders and people who have enormous amount of integrity and faith and the credibility in the system that is how it comes for instance they passed a law in 1963 dowry abolition i remember i was a school student the processions were taken in the road with the drums getting beaten as the biggest achievement of the government you tell me sir 1963 to today nobody has collected any dowry so the laws are very so most important thing the judiciary should understand in indian context is law and practice they are not uh, congruent unlike western developed democracies where law and practice are congruent here the practices are different and over a period it might align with the law with the changes in societal system but otherwise uh, they are not so you may make any amount of uh, noises and other thing and uh, do not uh, visualize yourself as a combination of raja ram mohan rai vivekananda and uh, narayan guru no which you are not you are simply uh, you know elevated yourself based upon the collegium system and uh, sitting in the uh, judicial uh, so your role very strictly otherwise you know you become uh, you know uh, i remember in kerala couple of years before one judge banned all the mosquitoes <laughs> i couldn't control my laughter you mean if mosquitoes come are you going to bring them as contempt of court or i think uh, the lakshman reka of every institution should be clearly understood whether it is judiciary whether it is bureaucracy whether it is uh, parliament legislature mlas everybody should know where to Uh, stop where to just to stop otherwise you know there is no uh, uh, way in which the republic can be saved 
the time element i want to conclude there is a uh, thing about uh, this was told to me by one other judicial person only there is a uh, yeah, buffalo was running very fast on the road so the elephant stopped the buffalo and why are you running so fast buffalo told they are catching all the cows and taking them to shed in order to provide some medicine and other thing so i don't want to be caught then he says they are catching all the cows but you are a buffalo why are you worried elephant asked <laughs> buffalo told dear elephant it will take at least 20 years for me in the indian court to prove that i am a buffalo and not a cow and start running and the elephant also started running so this is the uh, situation we are in and uh, timeliness is extremely important swift and uh, severe punishment swiftness is not there it takes ages in the indian court and uh, severity is also not there particularly for severe crimes uh, recently one judge told every sinner has got a future i i do not understand it's a sort of a sermon given in a uh, worshiping uh, you know uh, worshiping place not in the judicial chamber we have to have swift punishment severe punishment for severe crimes we seem to be very liberal on that score also i think uh, a time has come judiciary must introspect must constitute a group of uh, people belonging to the judiciary retired as well as other eminent thinker to look at the, what are the major areas of crisis why the credibility of the judiciary is so low if you ask on a as a professor 1 to 10 scale the credibility will be somewhere around 1 or 2 only very sad to say because i have so many friends and relatives in the uh, judicial system but uh, sooner they take steps because it's one of the important limb of the uh, republic they call in terms of the judiciary legislature executive but judiciary is a very very important limb and they should know their role they should know their limitation and they should also know where to draw a line thank you very much Thank you.